It's another math day here with teacher Jenny. Join me for another topic. This time, our topic is random variables. What is variable? So when you say variable, everybody, this is going to be any characteristic number or quantity that describes a person, place, event, thing, or idea that can be measured or counted. So let's say when we are going to say age of a person. So age of a person is an example of a variable because again, when you will be asking anybody about their age, it's going to be varying in value. So some might say that they are 17. Some might say that they are 18. Some might say that they are 19, 20, or any other value. So there might be repeated value in there, but if you try to look at that, your values might be varying per person that you will be asking. So that's a variable. Now a variable can be classified into quantity, qualitative or quantitative. So when you say qualitative, everybody, those variables that has a response, which are numbers, those are quantitative. So when you say qualitative, those variables that has a non-value or non-number as a response, those are under qualitative. So let's say, for example, somebody would like to ask you about your favorite color. So the favorite color here is a variable. It will be varying. The response here will be varying per person that you will be asking. Some might be saying their favorite color could be red. Others might be answering blue. Others might be answering green, purple. Others might have pink. So this will be varying per person. So again, when you say variable, so any characteristic number or quantity that describes a person, place, event, or thing, or idea that can be measured or counted. So that's a variable. So let's go over to random variable. So when you say random variable, this is a variable whose value is dependent to the outcome of a well-defined random event or experiment. So when you say experiment, experiment is going to be doing an action that will give out a result. So that's an experiment. So let's say, for example, when you wanted to toss a coin. So tossing a coin here is an experiment because we are doing something on a coin and we are expected to get a result. So that's an experiment. Another one is rolling a die. When you say rolling a die, die means it's a singular form of the word dice. If you have only one of this, that means to say it's a die. But if you have more than that, that's a dice. I mean, that's dice, sorry. Now, when you say rolling a die, that's an experiment. Because again, we are trying to do something on that particular object, which is the die. And we are expecting a result. Now, that result, we are calling that one as an outcome. So, that outcome will be very much dependent on the object that you are trying to test on or trying to do an action with. So, just like in tossing a coin. So, when you toss a coin, your possible outcomes are the following. So, you have either head or tail. So that's an outcome. That's a result from tossing a coin. Now, when you go for rolling a die, the possible results here could be one, two, three, four, five, 
and 6. So again, those are the possible outcomes from your experiment, which is rolling a die. Now, when we go to our uh, real-life scenario, when you say experiment here, this could be taking a test. Now, in taking a test, we are doing something on a test paper. We're answering. So, what we're actually doing there is an experiment. And the possible outcome when you talk about taking a test and as, as an experiment is either a pass or a fail. So that's again experiment and that's an outcome. Now, let's go over to event. So when we say event, everybody, event is happening. So again, when you say event, that might be referring to happening. So when you say happenings, when you go for uh, experiment, your event could be related to the particular outcome. So let's say, for example, when tossing a coin, when we say event, the event there is related to the outcome. So let's say here, the event when we're tossing a coin could be getting ahead or a tail so that's an event and again when you say event this is what you wanted to come up with or this is what you wanted to happen when you are doing the experiment so you wanted to get ahead you wanted to get a tail that's an event now going over to rolling a die an event there could be getting a one so that's an event because that is what you wanted to come up with when you are doing the experiment. Getting a 1, getting a 2, getting a 3, getting a 4, getting a 5, getting a 6. Or it could be getting an odd or even. So that is again an event because that is what you wanted to happen. Now let's go over to taking a test. So when you say event here, this is getting a passing score, a passing or a failing score. So either of the two can be your event. So let's say my event could be getting a passing score. So that is an event. Another, another event could be getting a failing score. So that is again an event. So let's go over to random variable. So when we say random variable, random variable is gonna be a variable whose value is dependent to the outcome of a well-defined random event or experiment. So meaning to say this variable here, which we call as random variable, is gonna be very much dependent to our outcomes in the experiment so let's say for example my random variable when i'm doing an experiment of tossing a coin here is the number of heads that can be my random variable now the number of heads here that would simply mean that we will be getting the value out from counting the number of heads per outcome. So let's say for example here, when we have the outcome head or tail, so what we are actually doing here when we have the random variable number of heads, we're just counting it per outcome. So first outcome is a head, we count how many heads are there, and that's one. And the next outcome is a tail, so we count the number of heads in there, but there's none, so that will be a zero. So again, this is a random variable because your outcomes there will have a varying value from time to time. So that's again, random variable. So another random variable for tossing a coin here could be the number of tails. And when you're rolling a die, could be the number of dots that can be. Because again, your outcome there, when you say the number of dots, could be either 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And you will be counting 
how many dots are there per outcome. And then, you can also have the number of odd. Or, you can have there the number of even. So, those are the random variables. Now, let's go over to the other term when we talk about random variables. So, this is known as stochastic variable also. Now, your random variables are classified into two. There are two classifications for this, one of which is discrete random variable. The other one is continuous random variable. Now, let's start with our discrete random variable. So, when you say discrete random variable, this refers to a variable whose value can be attained through counting. So, again, when you are going to um, have a variable there and a response can be obtained out from counting, that means to say that that is discrete random variable. Example here is the number of students. So, the number of students in a class is an example of a discrete random variable because, again, when you are obtaining the value here, you will be counting the number of students in a class. And again, when you are going to find out the number of students in each of the class, it's going to be different in values per class. So that's random variable. And again, that's discrete random variable. Now, there are times that when you have your random variable, those random variables, the value there could, could be attained through counting, but there might be infinite counting to it. So, meaning to say that might be countably infinite or that might be under countably infinite, meaning you can count it, but that might take up a lot of time and a lot of effort. Example here is strands of hair. Strands of hair will be very much, the value here will be very much dependent on the volume of your hair. So, it might be taking up time to count how many strands of hair might be in a person's head. So, that's an example of countably infinite. So, the thought there that you can count those objects or the response of that particular variable can be counted, that will be under discrete random variable. Just like an example a while ago when we have rolling a die or rolling dice, we have even numbers. So, the fact there that we can count even numbers on the outcomes, then that is discrete random variable. We also have uh, we also had odd numbers in which we can count on how many odd numbers are there in the outcome of that experiment. So, when we're tossing a coin, we can count the number of tails or the number of heads in that particular experiment. So, that's under a discrete random variable. The number of students here in a class, that will be under discrete random variable because, again, we can count the number of students and that will be the value of the random variable. And, again, your number of students will be varying dependent on the school that you are counting, the number of students. Another one could be the number of girls or boys in a class. Again, the number of boys and girls or girls in a class will be varying dependent on a particular class. And again, the value there can be obtained through counting. So, let us now go to continuous random variable. So, when you say continuous random variable, this is different from discrete in a way that we can obtain this one through 
measurement. Now, also, what we are expecting here as a value would not be only whole number, but we can also expect decimal values, just like your height. This can be obtained through measurement, your time. Time here, although we can count the time, but then again, when we talk about time, we have the number of hours to consider. We also have the number of minutes to consider. And we also have the number of seconds to consider. That's the time. So that means this one here is a whole number part. And the minutes and the seconds and the milliseconds are the decimal parts. So we will be expecting that there will be a decimal value out from the response. So that is under continuous random variable. Let's go over to dice. Now in the dice, we can, we can have there the mass or weight of the die. We are measuring that one. And again, your die or dice might be different in terms of weight per material it is made of. Going over to the coin, we can have there an example under continuous random variable as the diameter of a coin. The diameter can be measured through any measuring device, measuring one point on a coin to the other point on a coin, making it sure that it passes through the center because that's diameter. Another example here is the height of the student. The height of a student, we can obtain that one through measuring the height of a particular student. And the height here will be varying per student. We also have the weight of a student. And again, weight of the student can be measured. And it varies according to who you are measuring the weight of. So that is random variables. For a discrete random variable, that's countable, or your values are obtained through counting. For continuous random variable, your values are obtained through measurement and possibility of obtaining a decimal value. So once again, this is your teacher Jenny, hoping that you have learned something from me. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more videos. Thank you.